I'm making this video and I want to first tell the religious people to stop watching, but what I really want to tell you religious people is to make sure you watch every bit of this. Why? Because religion makes you ignorant. How and why? It teaches you and reinforces that you stay ignorant and closed-minded. Why? Because it has to remain the sole authority in life. You cannot ever come to realize that you as a human have far more power than the very people claiming that they speak to God, spread God's word, or even more hypocritical, and excommunicate you from God. It would be one thing if your religion taught you to listen to a thing and determine if it is true or false. But no, it teaches you that anything spiritual is of Satan. Trademark. It talks of wisdom on one hand, but then teaches you to be a child when dealing with the very thing you are to be a judge over, i.e. spiritual things. I believe that all knowledge is good. There is no degree in my world where not knowing a thing is a good thing. I have to know what the evil man thinks just as much as I need to know what a good man thinks. For instance, if you saw an older woman getting a younger man drunk and then taking him to her car, if you didn't know what was going on, you not only couldn't warn him, but you yourself might fall into the very same trap. That brings me to my first power, empathy. Empathy is an actual, everyone uses the word empathy. Everyone uses the word in the wrong way. You often hear people say they have empathy for someone going through some hard time. So the, uh, so the common definition is one of feeling, but not physical feeling, but emotional sympathy. Empathy on an actual scale involves having sympathy for someone, knowledge of a situation, understanding an experience in the common human experience, and then the next step up from that, low-grade empathy. Being a full empath means that you physically feel what a person is going through or even feeling something that they are relating to you. Understanding intrinsically what they went through or are going through psychologically knowing what they are going through, seeing in your mind's eye what they are or did go through. The last step of an empath is full clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, and claircognizance. Normally humans are graded in a one in 100,000 people. Criminals are one in 100,000 people. Geniuses are one in every 100,000 people. A full empath might be one in every 500,000 to 1 million people. Did I reach the final stage of empath? Yes and no. I have noticed that if I am not happy in my life, I cannot achieve any psychic abilities. But the opposite is also true. When I am happy in my life, I cannot shut it off. That being said, I can feel strong emotions or taint or corruption on people. For instance, when I interviewed for the CIA, the woman that interviewed me first was revolting. I wanted to throw up. I felt sick around her. The second person was a man, and I felt nothing from him. I could barely think around the woman. They both gave me a polygraph test. I could barely answer the woman because the evil, corruption, the murderous intent that came off of her body shocked me. I wanted to say something but feared they might take me or try and study me or something. I could feel murder all around her, yards away from her. I have never been in an aura reader reader, but I could almost see her murderous spirit, which means brings me to visions. And when religious people hear me, they shut their ears off and run from me, saying, I'm of demons, or my powers are from Satan. Yes, 
I've seen death, a lot of death. I've seen murder. I've seen tragedy. But I've seen angels many, many times. And I haven't just seen them. I've spoken with them, shook their hand, touched them, or even was pinned down by one that was mad at me. My family said all my life I was to be a minister, but when it came to it, I rejected it. And the moral, more I rejected it, the worship, the worst things got. And then come the angels, showing me my future and me rejecting it. Unlike what Hollywood shows, I never saw them with wings, but I knew they weren't human. They are, they all glowed white. They weren't white men, they simply glowed, but it wasn't a simple glow like a white light bulb. They weren't in this dimension. Their glow was like white hot fire, so hot that it was white. It doesn't light up the surrounding rooms though. It wasn't in, it was in another dimension. And I saw them from this dimension. But I could wrestle with them, push them, or more truthfully, struggle against them like a tiny child against an NFL defensive football player. They don't touch you physically like another human. It was more of an understanding that a law of nature was taking place. One time, one sat on me, and no matter how much I struggled, not even his robes moved. He sat on me, and that was a law of the universe sitting on me. I began screaming at the top of my lungs and my entire household came to rescue me. He stood up and I scrambled to get to out of the room, only to be picked up by my very large, strong aunt. They asked me what was wrong and I said, the angel, can't you see him? They all looked around the room and saw nothing. Again, I pointed right at him screaming, he's right there, don't you see him? Again, they saw nothing, then he left. This angel was sent as a follow-up to the angel showing me that I was to be a minister. This one was tall, taller than the house I was in. As I said before, I was looking into another dimension, so I could see that it was ridiculously tall. But the roof of the house didn't touch him. He had to be ten stories tall. And of course he was glowing, but not lighting up the room. I told him I would not be a minister, nor preacher, nor priest. He looked annoyed and vanished. He laid a cross on my shoulders, heavier than anything I have ever felt in my life. Yet, it didn't crush me. This was punishment. The encounter took about an hour. The one that sat on me took about 30 minutes. Now, you'll be mad at me, but unlike the people in the Bible, I wasn't awestruck by them. I felt more annoyed by them than anything. I knew exactly who they were, but not why they showed up. Now, I have never in my life seen a demon, nor spoke to a demon. I don't think they even work like that. The evil that I have felt from men, that includes women, is emanating from that person and that person alone. There was no evil spirit controlling them. Ironically, growing up in the church, it took me quite some time to figure out that out. It took me quite some time to figure that out. And when I came to this realization, because of my powers, I felt like I had just found out that Santa Claus was fake. Man is good on his own, and man is evil on his own. Then that picks up the question, why do angels appear to people? Angels are nearly 100% just protectors. They hardly ever speak. I think they spoke to me because I'm a protector and an architect of men. That's why I felt annoyed seeing them and talking to them. They weren't there to help me. They weren't showing up to protect me. They weren't showing up to bless me with anything. They showed up to use me. And unlike men, they knew exactly what I was capable of. They knew I had powers and they wanted to use those powers for their own end. Now the second question comes up. Did I feel the power of God coming from them? No. I think the angels are actually capable of working and thinking for themselves. This doesn't mean they aren't good. They, it, that This simply means the very simplistic way the church describes them defines them as these automatic, simple, 
are robots that only do what God tells them to do. I saw this as pure foolishness. From my experience with them, they are middle management. They have a set of parameters to work within, and that's what they do. They are like modern soldiers. There's no general that tells an officer to order 50 tanks. The officer simply orders 50 tanks because he needs 50 tanks. They saw me, saw my powers, and were like, we're going to get that guy to help out. And my answer was no. Some of you will hear this and think, why on earth would you say no to angels? Who ultimately work for God? That's just it. My concept of God is that he sits at the center of the universe and he set everything in motion. He didn't say, go get Shikama. The angels decided that I want to live my life for me. I already said I'm a protector and an architect of men. I don't need a boss telling me what to do. Now, for those of you who don't believe any of this, I would direct you to read the book Angels on Assignment. It was written by a former Catholic priest who renounced his religion and was constantly contacted by angels. Now, he agreed to talk to them. They showed him all sorts of things. Now, understand, he renounced his religion, got married, and had children. So this isn't a person given to the hysteria of religion. He, re he wrote about the shapeshifters, witches, people who do demonic sacrifice, the secret societies, all shown to him over the course of years by angels. Now, we know for a fact that people do demonic rituals and sacrifices. It's nothing new, not even unbelievable. The mainstream media isn't going to talk about it, but we've all heard from the alternative news and confessions in interviews. What is somebody, what is someone going to do? Arrest them for worshiping Satan? They have no fear of that. Finally, the ghosts that I'm always hearing, seeing, feeling, I think they all try to and communicate with me because they know I can feel them. What's funny is I'm infecting, infecting my roommate. He'll hear something, but he'll go open the front door. No, it's inside the house. And when obvious things happen, like bottles rolling around the floor or loud noises, he refuses to admit it's a ghost. Sometimes he'll refuse to admit to hearing things. But with me around, the ghosts are bold and make noise, even when he's around. Anyone want, anyone want to come spend a week with me? Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show.